<laughs> hey yogis, good morning. I am here in my home with Luna and today I have a video shoot. So I've been getting a lot of requests from people who want to know how I plan my video shoots and what it looks like behind the scenes. Can you please stop licking my armpit? Oh my god. So anyway, I just decided this morning might as well take you along with me and show you what it's like. So I have the studio booked um, from 10.30 to 3.30 p.m. today. It's about 9.15 right now. So I've been up for about an hour or so. I showered, did my makeup. I have my first outfit on, um, but I have a few more packed. So I'll show you what I bring with me. Now, I tend to have two different kinds of video shoots. Some I call big production shoots and others I call small production shoots. So the small production shoots are the ones that I do by myself on my own. So there's no one else present there. That's what I'm doing today. So for these small shoots, they're a lot more low key. Um, it's definitely more work for me because obviously I have to be the person that's in front of the camera as well as behind the camera. But I would say probably 65 or 70 percent of my shoots are smaller productions where i'm just a one-woman show and i pretty much always use that studio with the red brick wall you guys have seen it before so i'll show you what it looks like and how i set up and all that kind of stuff and often or sometimes i do have bigger production shoots which just means that i have a videographer with me so the advantage of those bigger productions is obviously the videographer brings his equipment which is so much better than mine um, I always use the same videographer. His name is Ivan. He's awesome. Ivan Cook. And he, you know, has way better equipment than me. And it's also really handy because with someone behind both cameras, they're able or he's able to listen to the audio and watch it at the same time and tell me if I need to do something over again. Whereas when I'm on my own, I don't really know how things are going to turn out until I get back home and I watch the footage again. And believe me, I've had many frustrating moments that way. So the other difference between my big production versus small production is that when it's just me, I only use one camera. So whenever you guys see a video of mine on YouTube where there are multiple angles, so a camera shooting from the front and one also at an angle, like 45 degrees, is usually where I place it. That means that I had a camera guy with me there. So someone, you know, an extra set of hands. So my makeup is done. Now I'm going to go um, pack up a little lunch. I always make sure I bring snacks with me because the days are long. It's a lot of physical exercise. It definitely takes a toll on me um, and then I'll show you what I packed and what I'm bringing with me and then we'll just head on over to the studio all right let's go okay so I'm gonna pack a smoothie with me and what I've prepared here is exactly the same recipe that I have in my what I eat in a day video so there's a scoop of organic vanilla protein powder or vegan organic protein powder little scoop of green defense which is like powdered greens some flax seeds and then I added a banana raspberries four ice cubes some almond milk and some water so it's super filling and definitely pretty much what I eat for breakfast I would say like 95% of the time All right, so this is the journal I use to write down everything I'm gonna have to do today. I get a lot of questions about how I write out and plan my classes, and I honestly don't think anyone would be able to know what my classes are. <laughs> Even if you're a seasoned teacher, um, I kind of write in my own, I don't know, code, I guess, which I think is fairly common for teachers, because basically as long as you know what you're doing and what it means, it doesn't really matter if other people don't, because no one usually ever sees this. Um, so first thing I do is I write out all the videos I'm hoping to film today. And then over here, I start to write them out. And again, like I'm not really sure that you're gonna be able to to totally <laughs> understand what I'm writing. I keep it really, really simple. You know, these are the poses I'm gonna do in my yin yoga class. Um, and this is the order that I wanna film it in. And then over here, next class, so here is where I'm gonna be in a second outfit, and these ones are standing up classes, so like vinyasa flow classes, so I do need to adjust it. Um, don't mind this little question mark. I have the minimal cues planned out just on another sheet of paper. Um, this was when I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, but I know this one now. So I write it all out. I mean, you can try to see if you, you know, 
if it makes sense to you, those who are yoga teachers, but that's basically it. And then over here, I have my bag. I'll show you the equipment, but in it, I have a strap, two blocks, um, my GH4, Panasonic GH4 camera that I used to film, my two microphones, and then I already have a tripod in my car. So another note about planning classes is I actually only like to write them out the day before. I don't like to write them out too far in advance because then it's a lot harder to remember what the sequences are, whereas like I just wrote, you know, all those out uh, last night. So it's still super fresh in my memory. Um, that's often a question I get is how do you remember all these sequences if you're teaching, you know, or trying to film six to eight classes in one day? I don't know. Um, I have a pretty good memory when it comes to this. Honestly, I think it's like, you know, doing 18 years of ballet and dance, you get really good at remembering choreography and picking up on it very, very quickly. So yoga classes are pretty easy for me to remember, but it definitely does make it easier on myself if I kind of wait until the last minute to plan it out and write it out. And the act of just writing down something also for sure helps you memorize it. So I bring my book with me, obviously, because I'm not you know, a super genius, like I will forget it if I don't have my book with me, but otherwise that's that's pretty much what I do. And the more experience you have, the easier it becomes to remember multiple and many, you know, many sequences and things like that. All right, so here we are. This is my studio, probably looks familiar. I mean, okay, correction. This is not my studio. <laughs> this is a meeting room, an office space that I rent out whenever I need to do a shoot. So I'm gonna move everything out so I can film against that wall. Okay, so as you can see, I have my bag, I have my tripod. Um, I decided not to bring my lights because the lighting in here is actually very good. So there's this window here, which is awesome to provide natural light, but then they also have a skylight right here, which is great because then, um, I don't know, it just ends up looking better in the video. So I'm gonna get settled in and move everything out of the way. So let me show you the setup. It's super simple. It's just one camera and um, sometimes I do use, I have two big like flash floodlights that I would put down, but honestly the lighting is really good today. I like to film on days that are a little bit cloudy. The cloudier it is, the better it is for um, just the lighting in your video. But I want to show you my camera because I get questions on this all the time. So this is the camera. <laughs> this is the camera I used to shoot when I'm shooting by myself. It's the Panasonic Lumix GH4 and this lens here is the Rokinon, I don't know how you say that, Rokinon I guess, um, 12 millimeter wide angle lens. So often I shoot in spaces that are quite small, so I need a wide angle lens. Um, the reason I like this camera, this GH4 here that you can see, is mainly because, so it has continuous shooting. So anyone who has like a DSLR or who has a camera, you might have noticed that after like, um, Sometimes it's 11 minutes, sometimes it's 29 minutes, no matter how big the SD card you have and how, no matter how much space you have available on your SD card, it stops recording. They'll usually stop recording after either 11 minutes or 29 minutes, which when I'm filming with a videographer, it doesn't matter, but when I'm on my own, I don't necessarily know when the camera has stopped recording and then I might keep going, keep instructing without realizing that nothing is actually being filmed. This has happened to me in the past, it sucks. So at least with this GH4, it's continuous, so it will never stop recording until I fill up my SD card. And I can usually film three to four classes before I fill it up, which is really, really good. The only inconvenience I would say with my setup here that I have is that because I have a, um, this lens is manual focus, which means it's not automatically gonna focus on me when I'm over there on the mat. Um, I have to, I'll show you what I do, but it's super awkward. I have to like put something on my mat, manually focus the lens until I get the view that I want, and then kind of 
you know, go on the mat and replace whatever it was that I had there. So I am looking to get a new lens that's autofocus and still wide angle. It's hard to find, but, and they're also very expensive. But if you guys are shopping around from some, uh, for some equipment, I have the link to that in my description box and I get a ton of questions about my audio equipment. So let me show you here. Um, I like to just store my microphones. It's kind of hard to open this while also holding a selfie stick <laughs> and trying to film. So these are the microphones that I use. I've had them for a very long time, like at least three years and they still work. So the brand is Sennheiser. EWG3 and again the link to that is down below in the description box they are fully charged so this is a wireless lavalier mic so um, let me move my smoothie out of the way oh lost focus here so one part of it is the receiver you plug that into the GH4 camera and then the other part is the one that I wear so this little lavalier mic I clip it to my tank top and then I clip this to the back of my pants and there you have it that's worked really well for me of course sometimes if your hair gets in the way or if um, clothing gets in the way it sounds bad which is also why I like to film with someone else whenever I can but for the most most part honestly they're amazing microphones I've had them for a long time and when I was first starting out, I didn't want to spend a lot of money, which of course makes sense. You know, if you're, I get so many requests from people who are yoga teachers or fitness trainers, things like that, and they want to start their own YouTube channels, but they don't want to spend a lot of money on equipment. And I totally understand. Um, I would say you can get away with not having video equipment for a long time, just because cell phones and cameras are so good now. But audio is where you're going to want to actually invest some money so i was given that advice i did not follow it i bought a cheap microphone for you know just a couple hundred dollars and it crapped out on me in a couple months and it really didn't sound very good so um i the sennheiser one that i have i want to say i paid maybe eight hundred dollars or so three years ago um, but I, you know, every single penny is worth it. The camera itself is a couple thousand dollars. The micro, the lens is maybe another thousand dollars. Um, video equipment is super expensive, which is also why I like to work with a videographer because they come with their own equipment. It's equipment that sometimes is valued up to like 30 grand and there's no way I would ever buy that for myself. That's insane. Um, so that is one advantage. And one thing I would suggest is if you really don't want to have to deal with anything equipment related, um just find a really good videographer who already comes with equipment you'll obviously have to pay them uh you know they don't they don't work for free and they can be really expensive but sometimes it's worth it and w whenever i have my next big production shoot i'll definitely take you guys behind the scenes because it's a completely different process than what i'm showing you today so i'm gonna get mic'd up and have a little bit of smoothie go over my first class and then i'll just start filming It's 12.30, I am now at the halfway point of my shoot, or almost at the halfway point. So I am taking a break now just so I can finish my smoothie, have a little snack, and then I'm going to have to readjust my setup a little bit. Um, so the next half, the way I kind of structure my shoot, I broke it down into like the classes that I do who are, that are low to the floor, um, that need my tripod very low, and now I'm moving into the more uh, challenging yoga classes. So vinyasa and uh, power yoga classes where I have to stand up. So it just prevents me from having to move the tripod a bunch of times without needing to. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna have a little bit of lunch, maybe go post some stuff on Instagram, check some emails, and I will resume shooting in about a half hour or so. Well, it's 3 p.m. I'm done filming and I am freaking exhausted. Um, I filmed everything except one video. I just kind of ran out of time. It's 3 p.m. now and I only have the space till 3.30 and I still, I mean, just look at the space. It's a mess. Um, so I have to put everything back and I am exhausted. <laughs> I always start these shoots super motivated, full of energy, and by the end of it, it's like, 
I don't know, feel like I ran a marathon, even though, you know, some classes were really hard that I filmed today, like really intense vinyasa flow practices. But for the most part, a lot of the classes I filmed were pretty easy, pretty chill. Um, they're yin yoga classes or they're just like talking videos. And it's funny because no matter what kind of videos I'm filming, they all seem to drain me the same way. So no matter what I film during the day, after a full day of shooting, I am just so dead <laughs> for the next eight hours or so, just because it's it is mentally challenging, so I get a lot of questions on this of like, how do you get the stamina to film, you know, three to eight classes per day when you have these filming shoots? And a lot of it comes from the fact that I, you know, exercise quite a bit, but also I've been doing it for a long time. So um, it was definitely much, much harder when I began doing this four and a half, almost five years ago now. So it does get easier with time and with practice. But at the same time, I'm also really good at hiding my fatigue for the camera. And then as soon as the cameras <laughs> stop rolling, I crash and I crash pretty hard. So um, it's one element that I think people don't realize is that it's mentally draining just as much as it's physically draining. So regardless of the kinds of classes I filmed that day, I'm still tired just because it's it takes a lot to plan, you know, three to eight classes um, the day before and to, I don't know, just like prepare and set up and um, teaching, you know, teaching takes a lot out of you. Anyone who's a teacher knows that you do get burnt out. You know, first class is great, second class is pretty good. And then by the third class, especially if you're like in a public setting, studio class, by the third one, it's, you know, you need a, a second win kind of thing. Otherwise you're feeling it for sure. And it's the same thing, even in front of a camera. Um, and I would say it's almost even more draining, I find, because when I teach in a studio setting, you at least have the energy of the participants that can kind of uh, reinvigorate you. Whereas when it's just me, myself and I, and just me and the camera, um, I have to produce 100% of that energy. So I am in no way, shape or form trying to complain. I love what I do. I think it's so awesome and so fun that I get to call this my job and my career. Um, and I hope I get to do it for a very, very, very long time. But I wanted to share with you, you know, what the process is like. So um, I'll show you where I am. So this studio where I'm at is in the heart of the Byward Market in Ottawa. So it's really, really fun for me to be able to shoot here. And every time after a big shoot, I have like the same little ritual. I go two stores down or two like two units down. There is a little shop called La Bottega. And if you are in Ottawa, if you don't already know about this little like Italian bistro grocery store slash restaurant, it's amazing. And I always get like a sandwich and it's like a super expensive sandwich, but I don't know, it's like my little treat for myself. So at this point I know I'm tired because I'm rambling and this video is probably super boring. So if you have tuned in till the end, you are amazing. And if you would like to see more kinds of vlogs like this, more videos where I share my life and what my days are like, please leave me a comment down below, let me know, and give me some ideas of what else you're curious about, what else you want to learn from me, um, what else you want to see. You know, I'm pretty much an open book with most things. I really don't mind. I love doing stuff like this. So I hope you found this somewhat beneficial, especially if you are a teacher and you're considering teaching online. I hope you found this helpful. Um, and yeah, that's where I'll leave it. Thank you so much for watching. Please do subscribe to my channel if you don't already. It's a wonderful way to support free yoga on the internet. Okay, I'm gonna go get a sandwich and then probably crash on the couch and do nothing and it's gonna be awesome. <laughs> okay, bye guys.